Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I am Coach Chris McMahon. I'm happy to have you here. Today's episode is a little bit different than normal. You see, right now, there are moving boxes all around me. We are in the process of moving out of our rental and moving into our first home. That's right. We bought a house, which is amazing, but it's also stress inducing. It's probably one of the most stressful things I have ever done in my life and my wife has ever done in her life. And she's given birth to two children. So what that means right now is that there's little semblance of a schedule. Routines are out of whack. And well, honestly, I thought it'd be helpful for any new parents out there, anyone expecting their kids, anyone thinking about having kids to know the things I wish I had known about health and fitness before having kids. So this is a special episode. Do me a favor, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn notifications on so you know when the next video is about to come out. Comment below with any of questions you might have and give a thumbs up if you find this helpful because that lets me know I should keep making videos like this. Ah, my life before kids was very, very different. I basically spent most of my time in the gym working as a trainer until I transitioned to coaching people online. Uh, I've been in the online space since about 2016. Um, now specifically working with folks who want to, you know, lose weight, still fit in their favorite pair of jeans while still enjoying ice cream. You know, I, I tend to work with a lot of fat loss clients online. And before this time, I was working for a fitness company that had me traveling around, teaching seminars, teaching workshops. I had to train two times a day uh, to make sure that my body was ready for the things it was being asked of because this was a lot of calisthenic work and strength work and I needed to really make sure that my body was in a specific place to be able to do that. I won't say it was the best lifestyle, whether it be uh, overtraining, which is actually kind of hard to do, but I was definitely doing it, not fueling myself properly, uh, struggling with all sorts of different things of that nature. And uh, it kind of led me to burning out. And now, as I sit here years later, I am just so glad for the way things have gone because leading up to having my son was probably one of the most chaotic times in my life. So my son was born in April of 2020, right in the height of the pandemic. Uh, he was a COVID baby. My wife actually had COVID when she gave birth and it was so crazy and scary because they did not know a lot about COVID at the time. Uh, so we were isolated. Basically those first two weeks of my son's life, I was on full-time dad duty because my wife had to isolate. We didn't know if there was a chance of her passing it on to, the, to our kiddo, to passing it on to me, which is dangerous because I'm type one diabetic. In the process of, of being this dad to this tiny human, I, I actually lost my job. That company that I had been traveling around and teaching for and coaching for, they laid off a lot of their staff and it, it, it kind of swept the rug out from under my feet because my son was about two days old when that happened. Um, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if I would be able to coach people. I didn't know if I'd be able to find work because I couldn't go work in person anywhere because of COVID. It was just generally a scary, scary time. I lost a lot of weight during that time because I wasn't eating enough um, and tr mainly trying to focus on keeping our son <laughs> alive. And it was just a scary time because I didn't know what was going to be next. It really caused me to have to slow down and look at things and, and figure out what was going to work best in that situation. It was also at this time that I started to work with a lot more parents. Uh, I guess the content I was sharing was pretty relatable. Um, and at that point, a lot of parents started to reach out to me uh, concerning like their fat loss, concerning their health choices. And that is kind of like sort of how it shaped my, my coaching business and where I was going with it. And after working with countless moms and dads and becoming one myself, I realized that there was this one thing that would completely shape the way someone could lose fat and gain strength and, and in general, just feel better in their body. Because at the end of the day, spending time as a parent, spending time with kids, doing, getting not enough sleep, it leads you to feeling pretty run down and pretty crummy. I was working with a mother and she was a mother of two. She was a single mom and she was incredibly busy. But at the same time, she wanted to lose about 10 to 15 pounds 
and fit back in her jeans that she wore pre-pregnancy. And I wanted to help her be able to do this. Now, in the past, before having kids, before when I was actually when I was really young as a trainer, I might say, okay, we have to do X, Y, Z. You need to make sure you do this and that. And if you skip out on that, right, there was there was very little wiggle room. And it's a mistake that probably a lot of young trainers make, I would like to think. And I can sit here confidently say I was very, very wrong. And what came about was this idea that, okay, what time do you have during the day? And all parents can do this. I recommend doing this before you have kids, doing it after your kid arrives, doing it maybe once a year, just checking in and seeing what your actual time looks like. This is called a time audit. It starts with you just going at, at uh, 12 a.m. leading to a full 24 hours. And you could separate it by every half hour, every hour, just so you have this point. And what you'll do is whenever those time schedules pop up, you'll just write down what you're doing. So this is an accurate way that you can see what you're doing and where your time is going. For instance, if you're spending 25 to 35 minutes doom scrolling every day at the same time, well, you know there's 25 to 30 minutes that you could be doing your exercise. You could be meal prepping, right? So it's about finding those pockets. To be real, when you have kids, it's probably not like 25 to 35 minutes. It's probably you have five minutes here. Maybe they take a nap. And usually during those 10 to 15 minutes, you might sit and watch TV. So you got to look and see what that time actually means for you and how you can use it. For this particular client, her goal was to lose weight. And at that time, focusing on nutrition was something that she wanted to do, but she wasn't ready to do. So we thought about focusing on moving her body more just to help her get things squared away so she had a routine. So she discovered that during the day when her kids napped is when she would usually watch TV and usually snack on things. And that's where those extra calories were probably coming from and also was where she could sneak in some movement. So instead of giving her a huge plan that she would have to follow or trying to program some crazy workout because day to day it would fluctuate what those naps was like, we just agreed upon having two warm up movements for her mobility, two strength movements and one stretch. Literally five things. Two warm up, two strength moves, one stretch. And her goal was to be as consistent as possible with that Monday through Friday. That was it. We kind of like left it there. And what happened was she was consistent with it for about 80% of the time, which is all you can ask for when you got two young kids who are off the wall and you're a single parent and you're trying to balance your work and do, there, there was a lot of competing things going on for her in that point of her life. But after month one, after month two, she started to add a little bit more. After month three, she started to add a little bit more until suddenly she became the person who like would carve out 30 to 45 minutes to get her body moving. Even if her kids were awake, it started to just become a part of her. From there, she started to build confidence with that and it snowballed to where she was like, all right, well, let's look at nutrition. What's something I can focus on? And instead of focusing on calories, we focused on hitting a protein goal and we focused on hitting a fiber goal. Then we built up to tracking calories. Then we built up to being able to track calories, protein, and fiber all together with it out, without it feeling so overwhelming. But it was like this snowball effect. And this is where I started to coin the term the bare ass minimum. Hitting your bare ass minimum week over week is how you can guarantee that you will make progress. Now, will that progress be as fast as someone who is 22 years old, is in college, has no other commitments, no, of course not. But what it is, is going to allow you to make progress week over week over week. No matter how small it is, it's still progress. And if you track it over 365 days, it's going to take you exactly where you want to go. And to be honest, when you do lose the weight, you're not going to fucking care how long it took. You're just going to be glad that you did it and you were consistent and you built this sort of routine that worked for you and where you were hoping to go. That's what people usually skip out on. That's where you usually mess things up. Now, as far as nutrition goes, something I wish I had realized from a young age, way before I had kids, was the idea that there's no such thing as a perfect nutrition plan. There's, there's just nothing. No diet is special. Like there's no special diet that's going to get you the results you're after. There's no, there's no magic feeding windows that you have to eat in. There's no special foods you need to eat for fat loss. Like the truth is, is if you are in a calorie deficit consistently, you will lose weight. 
However big that calorie deficit is, determines the rate of weight loss. So I would rather see someone maintain a, a less extreme deficit and be able to lose 0.5 to one pound on average per week, week over week. Of course, there will be fluctuations and things of that nature. Versus having a more intense deficit and not being able to stick with it or having an intense deficit and slowly start increasing calories. So you're still in a deficit, but it's not as intense in the beginning, um, almost like a rapid fat loss protocol. Those are things I wish I knew about when I was younger, right? I, but I, I didn't. Um, I, I chose not to dive into nutrition as much as I could because I thought the gym was all you really need to be concerned about. The thing I really find to be helpful when it comes to this, when you're in the heart of having like craziness, madness, do the thing that's easiest for you with nutrition. So I'm going to break it down. The most important thing for fat loss is a calorie deficit, right? If our goal is to lose fat, which if you have kids and you've kind of let yourself go and you're ready for fat loss, you might not be ready to track all of your calories. I would say you probably are, but it might be too overwhelming for you right now. And the last thing we want to do is overwhelm you to the point where you're not going to do anything at all. So here's the easiest entry point that I found with clients who are brand new to this, who are short on time. And it's, it's uh, three balanced plates and two snacks. If you're hitting three balanced plates per day and two snacks, you are naturally going to be in a calorie deficit because you are consuming less, you're doing less snacking, you're not eating leftovers that are on your kid's plate because that tends to be how we add things up. You might be thinking, I don't eat that much during the day, but I can't seem to lose any weight. You're right, you're probably not eating a lot at your meals, but you probably are snacking and you probably are finding comfort in those things because it's a little bit of a break from the hectic life that you're living right now. So I don't blame you for that because trust me, I've been there, my wife has been there, our friends with kids have been there. It's not uncommon, you're not alone. But you can start to, to notice these things by doing a few, a few different options. Number one is for a week straight, just write down everything you eat. Like literally everything that enters your mouth, write it down. I don't care if it's an ice cube, I don't care if it's a single potato chip, just write it down. You're, you're not going to beat yourself up over this. If anything, you're just going to be more aware, oh wow, I actually am eating more than I thought I'm eating. That's going to be helpful for you. It's going to be pretty eye-opening. Now if you want to go the calorie route, you could just simply scan the barcode um, using something like Macros First or MyFitnessPal or Chronometer and log everything without really being overly concerned. That just requires that you weigh and measure things. If you're not quite there, if you don't have a food scale, you can easily get one from Amazon. But if you're not ready to take that step, I suggest just writing everything down. That level of accountability with the food log is going to help you start to see and notice the patterns that you have. That's going to give you an entry point to start to be able to make tweaks. This is also something you can do pretty easily even with kids your phone out, punching in how many calories something is or weighing and measuring things can be really hard when you have kids who are running around nonstop. I get it. Trust me. So just writing things down with a pen and paper of what you're eating, when you're eating it is a great starting point. From there, we're going to look and just make things easier by saying you got to eat three plates and two snacks, right? I don't want you skipping meals. I don't want you saying, well, I have to avoid this food or that food. Nope. Three plates and two snacks. What is a balanced plate? A balanced plate is a plate that is made up of like 50% vegetables, right? An ample supply of vegetables because, well, you can eat more of them. It's lower calorie. It's very satiating and filling. And you're going to get a fiber bonus from it. Now, I include fruits in that category too because, to be honest, you're not getting enough fiber most likely. For every thousand calories, you should be having about 14 grams of fiber. If that's not how much you're getting, you're really like, you're missing it. Plus you're missing out on smooth poops and reduce all cause mortality. And also no one ever got fat from eating too much fruit or eating too much salad or vegetables. I'm gonna be honest with you. So we have to think about it that way. You, the goal of fat loss is to eat as much as possible while still losing weight. So working up to 50% of fruits, vegetables on your plate, really helpful. The other half of your plate, 25%, you want it to be a lean source of protein. About like three ounces, four ounces. To be honest, that's about the size of the palm of your hand. So just think about it that way. I want one to two palmfuls of protein at every meal. 
Then we have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, we want to think of like fibrous carbohydrates. Fibrous carbohydrates are just going to be lower in calorie, which means you can have more of it. So if we look at an example of this, half cup of oatmeal, which is about 140, 150 calories, but has five grams of fiber in it. So it's going to help keep you full longer versus cereal, which might not keep you full as long and might lead to you wanting more. So there's just a, a, a way you can kind of look at it. If I can add the fiber and increase that fiber to whatever I'm eating, it's probably going to keep me full longer and it's probably going to mean I can have more of it. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. So if we look at this, we have our, our fruits and vegetables, one half of the plate, our one to two palmfuls of protein on the other side. We got, you can think about it like a cupped handful of Carbohydrate is like the easiest way to go about it, um, which could be about 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrate. Um, and then you got like one to two thumb lengths of fat, like healthy fats, right? Avocado, olive oil, cheese, whatever you want it to be. But make sure it's like one source of fat versus being like, all right, I'm going to have some salmon and I'm also going to put olive oil on it. And let's also make sure that we have butter. Well, suddenly you've now tripled up on fat. That just increases the calorie of the meal. So we'll keep it easy for yourself. Try to have one source of fat at each meal. So that's three plates. And use a regular fucking plate. I don't want you to use a, a whole lunch tray. I don't want you to use like a tiny thimble. Regular size plate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And your two snacks that you have, you're going to want them to be protein-based snacks. If you have protein and fiber mixed together, you're going to be full longer. Easy things like a protein shake and a piece of fruit keep you full until your next meal. Easy things like Greek yogurt and berries, keep you full to your next meal. A low fat cheese mixed with a piece of fruit. Wow, protein and fiber, right? These, these options that work well for you. But to be honest, you could choose whatever snack you want to have so long as you just have one of it versus multiple of it. It just happens to be that protein and fiber make it easier to stick with this. If you stick with three plates and two snacks and start drinking more water or switching to zero calorie beverages, you are going to find you lose weight. That's the easiest. That's one of the easiest ways to do it without tracking your calories. Three plates, two snacks, more water. That's a good place to get started, especially if you have kids. When someone's trying to lose fat, I will really, really, really lean into hitting like 7,500 steps per day or increasing that higher. There's just a huge ton of research showing that anything above 7,500 steps reduce all cause mortality, which is a good thing. But step is kind of like an arbitrary thing. You know, it's not, not necessarily that you have to hit steps. It's more that you have to be moving your body and steps just happen to be something that's easier to track, to know if you're hitting the right thing. So what you can consider is this. I just want you moving your body. You could ride the stationary bike for 10 to 15 minutes. You could play with your kids and have a dance party, you could wrestle with your kids. You could play with your dog, go on a walk with your dog. You could park further away and walk, walk further to the store. You could take the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator. These are all little things that count. But if you're not trying to actually actively sneak them in, you're not going to get them. So what I'm saying is play with your kids. You have these young kids, maybe they're even like, a little bit older and they want to they want to play basketball they want to they want to take up running like do those things with them and get involved with it it doesn't have to be something where where it's overly strict it doesn't have to be something where you're like all right we have to do this no it's just like all right i want to start moving my body more how can i start to sneak this in oh i can take a 10 minute walk today and then have like a a little bit of a dance party with my toddler at night cool 10 minute walk is like a thousand steps cool. A 10 minute dance party is like 2000 steps, right? That's an extra 3000 steps on top of the 4000 steps you normally take. And it took only 20 extra minutes. And those are things that you can sneak in, especially if you go back and look at your time audit. Pretty sure you can find five to 10 minutes to step outside and walk a lap. It doesn't have to be anything overly dramatic. And it can be something that you can stick with more easily. I'm going to be honest with you. I talk about hitting 7500 steps every day. And the truth is, right now, where I am, with the hectic life I'm living, with having a baby who's three months old, with having a toddler who's four, with having a move that's going to happen, I'm not going for as many walks as I do. I'm lucky if I take my dog for a walk, right? It's just where I am right now. So what do I do? 
I hop on the stationary bike at the end of my workday for like 10 to 15 minutes and I bank a bunch of steps, a bunch of activity. I just wear my watch on my ankles so I can track it. It doesn't matter. It's just adding some more movement in. And then I play with my kids. I wrestle with my son all the time. I play with my dog. Like these are just ways that I'm trying to be more active throughout the day. And those are little things that you could do part of hitting like your bare ass minimum for yourself. Sleep is pretty important. It really, really is. Uh, when I first got started as a trainer, I was 21. Um, and the thing that sticks out for me in the back of my mind was I just slept so much. Like if I could, I would sleep in every day. Um, I just loved sleep so much and I still love sleep. And to be honest, to make fat loss easier, getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep at night is like the secret. Like it is the ultimate fat loss cheat code is it helps with hunger and fullness hormones and the food choices you'll make the next day and the food choices you'll make at night. Like all of these things are so helpful. It'll help you with your training because you'll have more energy, like all of these things. But I'm not going to sit here and fucking lie to you. If you have a newborn, if you have toddlers, like your sleep is going in the tank. It's just a part of it. I saw something, I think it might have been on Instagram, that on average, for the young years of your child's life, uh, a, a parent will lose about six months of sleep, something like that, something crazy. And uh, yeah, that's just what it is. It's not a forever thing. It's not going to be perfect. So that's why I really like to look at getting at least six hours of sleep per night. It's kind of like a grand scale. Like some people do better with less sleep. I'm not going to say like you really can function on less sleep forever, but I will say six hours of sleep and up is still doable. It's still something that can work for you. It's just going to mean that you have to pay more attention to what your eating patterns are later in the evening, right? Right now I stay up with my wife when she does her last breast pump of the evening and uh, our kids are already down. And that means we sit, we watch TV, I used to not do this, but now I do it kind of just like camaraderie being there uh, because my wife is doing so many amazing things. And it's really easy to get snacky the later you stay up. So what do I try to do? I try to talk to my wife. <laughs> like I talk to her more. Or if I am picking a snack, it's something that's higher in protein, lower in calorie, you know, things like Greek yogurt mixed with a protein powder with some frozen fruit on top. Like that helps hit a sweet craving that might pop up that helps me deal with that. If you're a single parent and you have no help, I, I, I don't even know how hard that must be. So I am gonna say here, it's not gonna be a forever thing. Eventually you'll get more sleep, but just be aware of the choices that you're making. And again, keep that food log so you can see how much you're having. This is something that can be a game changer. So these are just some of the things I wish I knew about health and fitness before having kids. I think one of the biggest things for me is how much they copy exactly what you do. My wife and I always do some sort of workout, like we do. It's, it's just part of our morning routine. And our oldest has been watching us do that since he was a baby. And now, if we're training in front of him, we'll try to pick up the weights, he will try to do push-ups, he will do squats, he will do different stretches, things that he's seen mommy and daddy do. And he thinks it's normal, like a normal part of life. And that perhaps is like one of the best gifts you can give your kids is teaching them that moving their body is just a great part of a daily routine to have, great for mental health, great for physical health. Like there are only net positives with that. And our baby sits and watches us in the Bjorn now too. So we've got two kiddos watching us, just something special about it, being able to share that too. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you really are having a hard time with fat loss and you're like, I just don't know how to get started with any of this, just click the link below and I will send you my ultimate fat loss guide guaranteed to help you lose weight without doing stupid things you see on the internet. I'll send it right to your inbox, no spam, no nothing like that. And look, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm always putting out content like this. It helps me to have you here and I appreciate you being here. So without further ado, remember you're one day away from getting back on track and one day away from realizing how fucking amazing you are.